good morning. You can help family. Today we're looking at 2 Kings chapter 21. My name is Sheena and I'm so glad that you chose God today. So let's hear what's, what's going on in this chapter. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. Now remember, this is King Hezekiah's son. Because Hezekiah did right by the Lord. Thank God some, somebody did. <laughs> so let's see how his son fares. And it says, he became the king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years. His mother was Hafziba. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight. Oh, no. Imitating the detestable practices of the pagan nations whom the Lord had driven from the land ahead of the Israelites. He rebuilt the pagan shrines his father Hezekiah had destroyed. Oh, well, this is disappointing. Oh gosh, he constructed altars for Baal and set up an Asherah pole just as King Ahab of Israel had done. He also bowed before all the forces of heaven and worshipped them. He even built pagan altars in the temple of the Lord. The place where the Lord had said his name should be honored. He built these altars for all the forces of heaven in both courtyards of the Lord's temple. Manasseh even sacrificed his own son in the fire. Ugh, this is just bad, right? He practiced sorcery and divination, and he consulted with mediums and psychics. He did much of that. He did much that was evil in the Lord's sight, arousing his anger. Well, my goodness. Ugh. Verse 7, Manasseh even took an Asherah pole he had made and set it up in the temple, the very place where the Lord had told David and his son Solomon, my name will be honored here forever in this temple and in Jerusalem, the city I have chosen from among all the other tribes of Israel. You know, it just makes me wonder, did he see anything that his dad did? <laughs> like, Manasseh, come on, this is really bad. If the Israelites will obey my commands, the whole law that was given through my servant Moses, I will not send them into exile for this land that I gave their ancestors. But the people refused to listen, and Manasseh led them to do even more evil than the pagan nations whom the Lord had destroyed when the Israelites entered the land. Verse 10, Then the Lord said through his servants, the prophets, King Manasseh of Judah has done many detestable things. He is even more wicked than the Amorites who lived in this land before Israel. He has led the people of Judah into idolatry. So this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I will bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of those who hear about it will tingle with horror. I will judge Jerusalem by the same standard I used for Samaria and by the same measure I used for the family of Ahab. I will wipe away the people of Jerusalem as one wipes a dish and turns it upside down. Now, what a visual if, if people don't use their dishwasher, you know, and you wash a dish and you turn it upside down. That means you're done with that dish. Like, ugh, such a word picture. Verse 14 says, then I will reject even those few of my people who are left and I will hand them over as plunder for their enemies. For they have done great evil in my sight and have angered me ever since their ancestors came out of Egypt. <sighs> it says in the commentary for verses 1 through 18 of this chapter, Manasseh's reign is presented as the blackest period in Judah's history. She was more sinful than the pagan nations driven out of Canaan during the Israelite conquest. Yeah, this is pretty sad. So the next uh, section is political situation under Manasseh. Verse 16. Manasseh also murdered many innocent people until Jerusalem was filled from one end to the other with innocent blood. This was in addition to the sin that he caused the people of Judah to commit, leading them to do evil in the Lord's sight. Uh, verse 17, the death of Manasseh. The rest of the events in Manasseh's reign and all his deeds, including the sins he committed, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Manasseh died, he was buried in the palace garden, the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Amon became the next king. 
so let's see what his son did. So in verse 19, Amon was 22 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem for two years. His mother was Meshulamath, the daughter of Haruz from Jotbah. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his father Manasseh had done. He followed the examples of his father, worshiping the same idols that his father had worshipped. He abandoned the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and he refused to follow the Lord's ways. Then Amon's own servants plotted against him and assassinated him in his palace. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Amon, and they made his son Josiah the next king. The rest of the events in Amon's reign and all his deeds are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. He was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah. Then his son Josiah became the next king. You know, you, you can heal family. After listening to all these kings, and thank God King Hezekiah was a breath of fresh air, but it just makes us want, it should make us, well, it makes me want to do the right thing, right? And want to follow the Lord. Because as you're listening to this, or as I'm reading it day after day, it's like, what, you know, I don't know. Why, why would you just want to disobey God? He brought them out of the land of Egypt, you know, and people still just want to be evil and just do things that aren't good. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's that. Now I'm going to ask you to like the video, <laughs> subscribe and hit the notification bell. I know it was kind of depressing read, but let the lesson be like, let's do the opposite. Let's do what's good and pleasing and right in the Lord's sight, even though we've been hearing this day after day. So that's the end of chapter 21. And we'll come back um, with chapter 22. We're almost done with second Kings, you guys, I think about four more days. So you're doing great. Thanks for listening. And a shout out to Chrissy Sam, who's getting up pretty much every morning the last week or so and walking and exercising. So um, that's really good. And yeah, I just wanted to mention that because normally she, she leaves in the comments that she gets her day started with me really early. So that's wonderful. All right. Keep going, Chrissy Sam. Thanks for all of you for listening today. We'll be back tomorrow. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. Bye.